What is the most resilient parasite, bacteria, a virus, an intestinal worm? An idea. Resilient, highly contagious. Once an idea has taken hold of the brain, it's almost impossible to eradicate. Kind of like Lou Diamond and his aftershave. It lingers. It's time to take an inside look at those that are taking their lives, their businesses, and their passions to the next level. Get ready to thrive loud with Lou Diamond. Welcome, everyone, to another episode of Thrive Loud with Lou Diamond, connecting you to the most inspiring and amazing people that are thriving each and every day. I am your host, Lou Diamond. Today on Thrive Loud, we have an individual who, with his industry-leading team, are responsible for delivering eight figures in annual sales on Amazon. Operating in online markets for over 17 years, he is an international speaker, advisor, co-founder of Seller Events, co-founder of Titan Network, that's going to sound familiar to you, loyal listeners, head mentor on China Magic, and more recently, the co-creator of Amazing Selling Machine. Thrive Loud listeners, we now have the other half of the Titan Royal Amazon family. Thrive Loud listeners, Dan Ashburn. Dan, how are you today? I am fantastic, Lou. Thanks for having me on the show. And thank you for that amazing introduction. So listeners will now need to know that that lovely accent doesn't come to us from the UK right now. It was removed from the UK and he's coming to us in the evening at Dubai. We are basically halfway across the, the, the world. And uh, the other half of the family I'm referring to, we just had Athena Severi on who uh, had mentioned Dan in that interview. And we definitely said, well, we have to have Dan on as well because this is a fascinating story. I want to do a little rewind to get our listeners up to speed here, Dan. Um, I want to go back and, and kind of understand how this became your gig. Yeah, sure. So long story short, I've been in the e-commerce space for about a decade, Amazon for sort of seven years. Um, about five or six years ago, Athena and I met at a industry conference and I uh, sort of pitched her on the idea of helping me share this thing that we were up to. And Athena being Athena, a few months later, she'd reversed that and I was in China speaking at the original China Magic event, which was China Magic 2. Uh, fell in love with that, helped Athena kind of develop it out from 20 or 30 people to 100 people twice a year. Fast forward to that a few years now, and we've delivered five or six China Magics together, taking five or 600 people to China. Uh, and Titan Network is born with over a thousand people as part of the network now, all serious seven-figure Amazon sellers and working towards that. So it's been a journey, it's been a ride and uh, loving every minute of it. So in your e-commerce expertise, so our listeners get an understanding of where you came yeah. from, what, what, what got you into that space and what, what products did you initially focus on? Sure. So I've, I was fascinated by the internet um, in my teens while my friends were out kind of playing soccer, as you call it. Um, I was building websites. I call it football. Maybe some football. of our listeners okay. call it Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so while my friends were out playing football, um, I was building websites, doing affiliate marketing, Amazon Associates, all that sort of stuff. Really got hooked on the kind of internet boom. Uh, and then came across e-com. And my first e-com project was actually a gold bullion website. Um, I just turned kind of 20. Um, I was uh, just out of the military at that point. I'd been making money in my teens online uh, and joined the military early. And then was able to take that store to from being a high street jewelers to just over two and a half million a month mm. uh, and the third largest bullion dealer in the UK. So a bit of an obscure one, a bit of a niche one, but high volume, low margin, very competitive on price, obviously, because people are buying bullion uh, and a lot of moving parts with the price of gold and stuff. But it was, a, it was an education. It was an education for sure. Did it shift into different types of products from there? Where did it head into, to, which really, I guess, geared you into the Amazon space? Sure. So, I mean, through, through the agency work I was doing at the time, helping sort of local businesses and brands. We, we ended up doing lots of different products. We had 
we had a, fe- a woman's wine bag, which was like a, they could conceal wine in this bag for concerts and stuff. And Dawn French, who's a, is a famous comedian, she, she ended up promoting that. We imported a lot of the, the hoverboards and the, the, those sort of products at that time. And um, David Beckham, it ended up in David Beckham's house with his son, um, having it all over Instagram. So co- sure, we pivoted across all this. My first product was, my first own label product was um, puppy, I don't know what you call them in America, the puppy pads. The dog, the dog goes to the toilet. <laughs> the wee wee pad things, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah, kind of fiddled around with all that stuff. But in about, two, I think it was 2014, uh, someone dropped the Amazon opportunity in my inbox, which was taking the concept of a platform that has millions of users every month. And instead of selling someone else's products, or at the time, I didn't even know you could sell on Amazon, to be honest, um, actually going to China, developing your own brand, your own products, and therefore owning 100% of the sales on that listing on Amazon. So that's kind of how it transpired. And that was kind of the end of 2014. Excellent. So you, you grew a successful business on Amazon. And not only that, you became kind of one of these titans within this space that has managed to master it. When did the decision come for you to say, I want to teach others how to do this. And you figured out that there was a good business behind it as well. Mm. Great question. So I, I, being this young kid that was fairly good at online marketing, I kind of came up in that era. A lot of the early Amazon industry was people leaving their nine to five, their corporate roles or mum and pop businesses and shops. Not really that tech savvy, not really that marketing savvy. So there I was, young kid. I don't know whether the British piece helped me out in the American events, but I found myself in the, at the center of these events, helping lots of people, had a bit about me in terms of strategy and, on, and how we could drive traffic and all that sort of stuff. And I really got a buzz out of one, helping people, but two, having the answers. But then what I, what I found very quickly is out of the hundred people, hundreds of people I would help, a very small percentage of them would actually then go and take action and implement the information they just consumed. And I feel like there's a... There's a passive consumption problem online nowadays where people consume all this stuff, but they take very little action against it. Um, And I realized those that succeeded were the ones that had invested in that, whether it was I was doing it professionally as a consultant or they'd paid me to to help them with a certain thing. Uh, And I can only really name two or three people that I'd done it as just out of my goodwill that really succeeded and went to sell on for for millions of dollars. Um, And then combine that with kind of China magic and what was going on there, we were taking 100 people to China and in that 12 days, creating a massive business transformation. I mean, from nothing to a million dollar business in, in as short as 12 days. And I realized what happens when you combine all this stuff, you combine like-minded entrepreneurs, you give them the resources, the, the tools, the, the, the strategies, you make them pay for it so they take it seriously and they, they look at it as an investment versus just passive information. Um, and then you, you also cut out all the noise in the space. And that's kind of where Titan was born, was out of that need. Um, and really the, the, the love and enjoyment of kind of have directing someone and then seeing that tangible result very quickly. And this, this, this last week, we just completed something called the Double Your Sales Challenge. Mm-hmm. And I took 600 people through five live sessions. And by the end of the week, we were literally doubling people's businesses. Um, and there's no better feeling or fulfillment or sense of purpose than that. So that's kind of the, the love and joy for it. I've got two questions. I'm going to flip the order that I wanted to ask them and, and you'll understand why in a minute. I want to understand what you look for in a potential client, someone that wants to sign up for mm-hmm. Titan, what do they sell? What are they, or does it matter what they sell? Or is there something about how their business has started? And, and I say this, is there somebody that isn't a good fit for this? So they, maybe they haven't started anything yet. Maybe it's too early. I wanna understand what you're looking at and say, that's the type of person we know that we can help take advantage of that investment. Yeah, sure. And do you know what? I've got more clarity on this in the last three or four years than I ever thought I would. And it's not about where you're at in the business. We are in this sort of golden era of e-commerce, as I call it right now. There is so much money in the space. Uh, One thing the pandemic did is kind of focus where all the investment dollars out of places like uh, Wall Street and these private equity funds is being placed. And if it only takes a quick Google search to find that there are billions of dollars being funded into the the private label brand space, specifically on Amazon, because that's where all the people are shopping. One in every two dollars in the US is spent on Amazon. Um, So it's less about kind of where you are, because there is an opportunity in, in Titan. We can take someone from knowing nothing about the business Um, to creating the business, or we can take someone that's already doing millions of dollars a year out of their their study and and accelerate that and help them exit for millions of dollars. 
the what I look for is less about where you're at in the business. And it's more about the drive and the desire within you as a human being and a person. Mm -hmm. So if, if you have that drive for success, you know that success doesn't come overnight, you're willing to put in the hard work, and it's kind of like that fire within your belly to succeed, yep. then you are a tight and you can be part of our community and we invite you in. And you also have to come with that abundance mindset of the together we are stronger is our mantra in Titan and, and kind of together we're stronger through the power of collective contribution. We can solve things so much faster. We can keep one step ahead of the competition and we can, we can take our slice of the billions of dollars. If you come at it from a, um, a scarcity mindset or you're not willing to put the work in or there's just a negativity around it, then that is, Titan is not for you at all. So it's less about kind of where you're at in the business and it's more about who you are as an entrepreneur, what you're striving for and knowing why you're doing it. Yep. You know those three things, we will get you there. We will get you to that end result of that million dollar exit or whatever it is you're looking for. So Dan, now I want to shift this to you specifically. And okay. I didn't do this when I, when I spoke with Athena, but I thought about it afterwards. Going from running your own business and building your own product in a way that you know your own drive and knew your, your own, you know your own direction, to now shifting into a mentor education-like role in an e-learning space, more or less, or in person, wherever it might be. Um, talk about that transformation for yourself. Because there's a, there are many of those who are really good at doing stuff and might be able to spew out all the ways to do it and come up with like really cool inspirational messages, but maybe not so tactical. And then there are those that actually have really proven methods that actually are they're able to explain and see the joy of others. What, do, which do you fall into and what has this experience been like in helping to educate and help and mentor others? Yeah, I would say the experience is is one, it clarifies vision. And let me explain that. So I still am very active in operating eight figures a year in Amazon sales. We spin out 10 to 20 brands a month. We launch 50 to 60 products a month on Amazon. I have a 150 person operation team under me um, with eight different divisions. Like we still have a very substantial size business. But what I love so much about layering the mentoring and the leadership and the education on top of that is there's an old saying that I fundamentally disagree with. And it's that whole thing. If you can't do teach, I, I believe that to be complete rubbish because what you I've learned. You say bullshit. Like, that's okay. I believe yeah, that's fucking Okay, cool. I, I went to say it. I just didn't know the rules. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> um, but what I've come to learn in my own journey is actually the best way of sharpening your own blade is to teach others how to do it. So if you think you, you are good in a business, whether it be e-commerce, Amazon, whatever your business is, that's one thing. But then being able to translate that to thousands of people in an action-orientated, actionable way that's not just general theory that no one can implement is a completely different skill. And for me, in, if I look back at the last kind of three years of my own personal development, personal growth, I can name some major step-ups in my ability uh, and my skill set. And it's always been under the pressure of having to teach hundreds, if not thousands of people how to do a very specific thing and, and generate a very specific result, which nowadays on Amazon, I mean, you've got to be pretty sophisticated to win on Amazon nowadays. So it forces me to stay ahead of every single one of my competitors, as well as the entire market, because everyone looks to me for that answer. So in this challenge we ran recently, we had six, 700 people in this Facebook group, and I was teaching them extremely advanced Amazon sponsored product advertising strategy, but I had to teach it in a certain way that 600 people would follow along and get a result yeah. so it it's almost being um it's, it's been a very therapeutic ex exercise for me because it sharpened my my ability but in that it's made me more confident in business which has then in turn made my business more successful in the actual brands because it's forcing me to be my own teacher and my own guide now i have to ask the un the unfair question and the question yeah. is when you wear these different hats which you're doing you're running a yes. business you're being a strategic ceo if you would um, to think about the direction of your overall brand. You're speaking, you're training, you're running the Titan Network. Uh, yeah. wh which, which hat do you like wearing the most? <laughs> the hat I see the most financial opportunity in is naturally the brands. Um, my, my, my personal goal is I want a nine-figure exit. Um, and that's more, it's less about the money. It's more, it's more about the achievements in life. The, the one I feel most fulfilled and I feel most purpose in 
is absolutely being the CEO of Titan Network and, and the leader of the leaders, so to speak. Um, the sense of fulfillment you get when you help someone take a business from six to seven figures, seven to even eight figures, or more recently, I mean, I can name 10, 15 people now that I've personally helped exit these businesses for multiple seven figures. I'm talking six, seven, eight, nine million dollars. Hmm. That fulfillment of, or that personal feeling of that sense of like impact that you've had on someone's not only their immediate life, their, their surrounding loved ones' lives, their legacy, uh, and what that's going to do for, for them and their future is, is something that's priceless that could never be matched by sitting and operating a business. So um, there are pros and cons to both, of course, and I love everything that comes with, with being the best in the game at something and holding myself to account to one of the best in the world. There's, there's, there's some really good people in this space, um, but the fulfillment and purpose is something that can never be matched. Dedicated listeners will now know that obviously Dan and Athena got together when they gave the answer and they 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 circled around around. Is, the is that what Athena said? Is that I, believe, said? I believe so. I, 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 we'll, we'll have to fine tune it. Not it. First of all, she didn't say it with the accent that you have. And, and you'd like okay. always say it must be that accent. I, we have a good uh, guest of the program and a good friend of mine, Phil M. Jones. And whenever yeah. he speaks, you're always listening because there's that British accent in there. So who knows? But yours has been, <laughs> yours has been tainted by a lot of U.S. work, some e-commerce space. And you're currently in Dubai, which, by the way, how did you end up in Dubai? Long story short, uh, holidayed here for years. It's only six hours from the UK. There's a lot of benefits to being in Dubai and it was pandemic driven. Fell in love with the place and haven't gone home. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's a, my that, kids, my wife, everyone is here. They're in school. Like we fully just up and, and took the leap. Spectacular. All right, let's do the admin part of the show. Uh, share with the listeners all the places people can find you, Dan. Socials, websites, places you're promoting right now. Uh, we will make sure that all the listeners read it in the show notes, but it always gets more engagement when they hear it from you. Thank you very much. So LinkedIn, Dan Ashburn, Facebook, Dan Ashburn, Instagram, Dan Ashburn UK. And then if you are intrigued by Titan Network, you are in e-commerce, maybe you're on Amazon or you're not, and you want to hit the fast track button on scaling a successful brand on Amazon, go to titannetwork.com, titannetwork.com. Spectacular. Now, you, now, Dan, are you ready to go down Fun Street with me? We've been having fun from the beginning, but you're, you're ready. Go. Okay. He's been really stewing about this question because I gave him the heads up that he had to think about it before we started. Dan, can you share with the listeners what is one of or maybe one of your more favorite all-time movies that you love to watch? The immediate one that comes to mind is the Avengers movies because I kind of think about Titan that way. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All the Titan leadership coming out and just kicking ass. Um, but then the one I think that's really relevant right now is Forrest Gump. So if you think about Forrest Gump and you think about what's going on in the world right now, both in business and in, in everyone's personal lives and, and the shift that everyone's had to make. And then think about Captain Dan and what he did when he, he went out on his fishing boat and he weathered that storm. When the storm passed, who was the person out at sea with a bag full of fish? It was Captain Dan because he was the one that went out to sea and weathered the storm. So that's one of my all-time favorite films. And I think the message is very relevant right now also. Um, whatever you're going through in business, whatever you're going through in life, weather the storm, people, because this storm will pass. Those who are going to see Dan speak or be in part of his classes could obviously expect a clip from this movie during one of his presentations, <laughs> I'm sure, about all the shrimp that you can get at the end of the boat. Bubba, Bubba Gum Shrimp never got such a better plug in its entire life. Okay. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Dan, we're going to do this speed round here, and this is how this okay. works. I'm going to ask you something, and I want the first thing that comes to your mind. Most of these things lift you up, make you feel good, motivate you. Basically, they make you thrive. You ready? Yeah. Of late, a song that you love to hear or maybe one that's your jam? Ed Sheeran, perfect. No, it's a good song. I like it. A favorite food that is not a dessert? Whoa, sushi. Okay. Favorite dessert? Apple crumble. Ooh, apple crumble. Do you need ice cream with that or just the apple crumble itself? Cold custard. Cold oh, custard. <laughs> <laughs> An activity you wish you did more of? Skydiving. Ooh. Do, you, do you skydive often? Yeah, here in Dubai, yeah. Okay. Like yourself or do you go with like the, the person, like the, the, the tandem? I'm, actually, I'm going through the license thing at the moment. Um, but yeah, I've done a lot of tandem. Somehow jumping out of a plane, this doesn't surprise me. An activity <laughs> you wish you did less of? Uh, household chores. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> I don't know why that comes to mind, but it's just the immediate, the immediate answer. Dan, if I were to snap my fingers and you can be anywhere in the world, where are Thailand. you? I am Thailand. I'm in Thailand, one of the islands, little raft, very little going on, no distraction, no TV, nothing, and just in, enjoying and taking in the, the scenery. The last question to wrap things up here in the speed round or the fun street of everything that we've been talking about, Dan. Uh, this is some spectacular space. You've get, you you're you're seeing a brand being built about yourself. Let alone you've been helping to build a lot of all these other products and brands throughout it. Uh, as you look forward, two years, three years, four years, who knows what the te technology will change or whatnot? Yeah. But what do you look at and say, "Ooh, that's something I want to do next." I look for impact. I look for something that's going to change the way in which society consume or think about something. Um, and then I look for the function within, within that. Now, I know that's a very broad kind of general status, mm -hmm. but I kind of look to where, where people are next. I look at where they are now and where they're going next. And I look at what's serving next. With e-commerce and everything that's going on, I don't ever see kind of this going away. The platforms might evolve. Amazon is going heavily into live selling right now. So live is going to be a thing mm -hmm. of the future. Most of the selling in China is done that way. Um, convenience is going to improve. So I look for those advancements within the market I know and then stay ahead and, and stick to those advancements. Dan Ashburn, I guess since we had the queen of Amazon the last time, I guess we're calling you the king, the royal part of the royal family. How about that? <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming on Thrive Dial today. Excellent to meet you. Keep moving on, winning upward, my friend. You're doing great. Thanks, Lou. Appreciate you, man. And to all our listeners out there, thank you for joining us. And until next time, keep thriving onward and upward. And remember, be brief, be bright, be gone. You've been listening to Thrive Loud with your host, Lou Diamond. Check us out on the web at thriveloud.com and follow us on Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter, and Facebook at Thrive Loud. And check us out on the Good Pods app at Thrive Loud, where you can follow, listen, and connect directly to Lou and all of the Thrive Loud episodes. Thanks for listening. <laughs>